Good morning and welcome to Morning Java. I'm joined by Andrew McCutcheon and, uh, oh yeah, Carter's here too. <laughs> Carter, it's a big day uh, in Pittsburgh. Huge day. Baseball fans have been anticipating this, you know, with a mixture of, you know, how Pirates fans are. They're mad yeah. about this, but... But they want to pay, pay on, but they want to pay respects to the man that helped revitalize the franchise and the... Oh, league. he didn't help. He did it. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right. He, it was him. It was, it was yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be as modest as I can about McCutcheon, but this guy coming back, he's been everything about, about the Pirates. He defined the Pirates. He was an MVP. Uh, I can understand why everyone is ready to go nuts all weekend about Andrew McCutcheon being back in Pittsburgh. You know, let me ask you this. Is it a different dynamic than what people were talking about three or four months ago when they said, I'm only buying tickets just to see Kutch. I'm not getting another ticket the rest of the year, that it was almost going to be like a protest thing. Now the team is actually playing really well. So now it's it's just going to be about Kutch, unless I'm completely misreading this. You know I, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I feel you. I think that there's still the people that are, we still want to see how this goes. Because, I mean, you still yeah, got yeah, yeah. to look at how they I just mean on this day. On this day, I think this is still all about Kutch. This was going to sell. If, if they had lost every game coming up to this point. That would have been a little different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But they are in a situation where I think everyone's kind of like, look. This guy's coming back. We, 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 were, we were so sad to see him go, but we're happy he's still doing his thing. We, everyone's got to come up, and when he takes, takes his first at-bat, uh, it's, it's going to be Yes or no? Sellout or no sellout? Sellout. No sellout. Really? No. Now, another thing that potentially softens the blow, if you will, of the Kutch return at the time that it comes is that one of the players acquired in the joint if you will, cut coal right. trades. a series of things. Because you almost yeah. have to look at it that way. And I, I believe I'm the last person that defends this front office, but I think it's mm -hmm. fair to say, you know, here's a whole bunch of players that they got for these two. Now, nobody's going to come from the cut trade. That, that Kyle Crick has been lousy, and the other one's yeah. a double-A outfit right, right. prospect. But Colin Moran has a 286 average, three bombs, 19 RBIs, and... All of those bombs have been like big ones. Yeah, it's especially that last one that especially put him over the top that in Chicago. Last one. And th does that at least buy the Pirates some time? I, I don't think right now it does. I think if he continues to work out, like say we get to we, say we get to July and Comrade's still on still on this, and they're competing for that first spot in the NL Central. I think then maybe my people people might be like, okay. Maybe maybe we can't we maybe we shouldn't you know come with all the pitchforks maybe just a couple, <laughs> maybe a couple torches but um, but they I, don't I, even let you in the stadium if you're wearing an anti Bob Nutting I saw shirt that. That's it's crazy. the truth yeah I heard and, like, that people, people I heard have that snuck the... them in and reportedly been then nope. escorted out I was told that before the opener it's wow. it's the truth that anyway is crazy anyway, anyway but no I, pitchforks no Bob I mean, Nutting shirts I think as long as he stays on on this kind of pace but also I mean you see. Uh, even outside of the trade itself, you've seen Cervelli. His his, his, his hitting's been up. Um, you know, Dickerson's been contributing. I think also if, not a trade acquisition. Well, he was a trade acquisition. It was right. more just an exchange of yeah, yeah. unwanted salaries. But uh, those guys in general, mm -hmm. Dickerson and Moran, I think, and the fact that the Pirates have done mostly winning, have bought management. I think some time. Yes. The question is, and of course this comes right after that, mm -hmm. is what will they do with it? Yeah, that's a good because question. You, the scenario you just described now, mm -hmm. well, if they get into July and they're da 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 say, do the they buy? Is, do, they, do they make a move? Yeah. And, I, and, it, and my thinking is, is, is they have to? Like, you think it would just make the most sense? Except for but one thing. Or, what? That they're the pirates. <laughs> right. It's like, it would, it would make the most sense, so what's the complete opposite that we could do right now? <laughs> I, I, I think that... If if they see that there's an opportunity there, maybe they make the stab. But uh, you know what? The the pirates have done so many things that I haven't expected, or maybe because I or things that I haven't thought that that, that should have been the move. That I'm kind of just like, you know what? Well, let's just sit back and see how they play this because you never know. I'll say this for the pirates being good so mm -hmm. far, and for Kutch coming back, it's really nice timing for the city. Yeah. Because, need something to root about. Yeah, the, the healing is going to take a while for hockey fans. And the, yes, there's more overlap 
than people like to admit. Hockey fans like to pretend that they don't like anything else. <laughs> right. But they're all watching football on mm -hmm. Sundays. They're mm -hmm. all paying attention to the Pirates yep. in the summertime. That was proven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it shows. It's just, I, I, but I feel hockey fans because, you know, the, the constant plight is we don't get the national attention. So I think that there's a natural movement to say, like, look. We own the city of this. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we own Pittsburgh. We, we, ha we have this. And I think that's where a lot of hockey fans come. But at the same time, you're part of the football crowd. Let, let, oh, let's, there's no yeah. question. I'll tell you what. The, when the Pirates were in the playoffs those three years, you saw Penguins jerseys oh, and yeah, stuff. All over whatever would happen to be black and gold, mm -hmm. it's no different over at Heinz Field. Yep. We see you, hockey fans. We respect <laughs> who you are and what you stand for, but we also know that Let's you're going to be lying. at the ballpark <laughs> and at the football stadium. Um, that said, it's it's a rough week. Yeah. Uh, like it can't be too. It's like it's the feeling like like it's, I was I was watching the game when what's his face scored and 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 and, and, and ended the series. It's kind of like you know what, like hey, what's his face being Evgeny Kuznetsov? Sorry, I can't think of his. Yeah, I, I knew I was going to mess his name up. I was I knew it started with a K, but anyways. Um, the point, the point, I, my, my point is here is that you knew that eventually that this run was going to end. It's sad yeah. that it ended, and you have to deal with it. But to me, this isn't like something sad. It's kind of just like you know what these guys gave a heck of a run, and there's no indication yeah, that they're slowing there's down. There's like a 60, 40, 70, 30 split, I think, in that sense. Yeah. However, what scares the 30 or 40, I think, if it's, you will, is that this, you, it's Pittsburgh, man. There were two championships yeah. with Mario, mm -hmm. and then the third one was a failure, mm -hmm. big one. Yeah, and then that was it. Uh, so the, the two were waiting for the drop off. And I think that they're they're fearing that aspect of mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, the last time Sid and Gino won very early, and then there was this long drought of the Dan Bilesmeyers. I think that's the part that scares them, and, and I think maybe is prompting some of them to say, "Do something. It, it can't just go back into next season like this." I, I don't know, man. See, I maybe feel, you can. I feel like it, this is this is a question of all the talk about Sullivan, and he's the best coach in the NHL because he came in and had two amazing years, and he really had a good year this year. They just fell short in, against a really good Capitals. In team. part because Barry Trotz did out coach him in yeah. the second round. Let's be fair there. Tactical. Right. That's I'm fine. talking to the X's and O's guy here, <laughs> but it, tactics do play a role, yes. and Sullivan never adjusted to Barry Trotz having figured out the Penguins pinching. Yeah, and I think if you want to be critical, but at the same time, that's just the first playoff series he's ever lost with this team. Here's my thing. If you're one of the people, and I'm not saying you're, I'm not calling anyone specifically out, but if there, there's a crowd that's been that's saying, Sullivan's the man, we love what he's doing, yep. and we love what he brings to this organization. Well, okay, now that he's lost one, is he still your man? And you gotta be, you gotta be realistic. It's like, okay, let's see how how he bounces back. If you think that he this is going to turn into a Billsman situation where year after year just nothing comes about and then they start getting swept swept out of the playoffs, no, he's he's going to adjust. And right. Sullivan's one of his great strengths as a head coach has been that he adjusts. I have no doubt he'll do that next year. I'm not big on NFL OTAs. I'm not big on NFL football in shorts. <laughs> football in shorts. Yes. The head coach <laughs> will say only about 100 times in the next few days. But rookie minicamp opens for the Steelers. Yes, it does. There's always something you can call from that. I don't know how else to put that. I, I've been able to get a read on guys, maybe even if it's just their personalities mm. at rookie minicamp, and I've, I've always valued it. Who is it that you're looking forward to just learning a, learning a little more about? Marcus Allen. Why? Specifically out of Penn State. This guy, he, when I watch him on tape, he only had one interception. That's the crazy part. Yeah, like, but you a, called him an enforcer he's in an your enfor classroom. Yeah, thank you. Well, look at this that's guy's old memory. school. Yeah, but here's, that's the thing. I, is when, I don't read your stuff. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's just Frank that it's, it's, it feels like that was like two months ago, and really that was like last week. But I devour your but, stuff, but, Carter. But here's, here's just a, like you read all my hockey I, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what do you like about him? Well, here's the thing. When you look at this guy, the way he hits, the way he comes up, he flies all over the field. Now, here's the thing. When you translate to that to the NFL, that doesn't always happen. Shamarco Thomas flew all over the field when he was playing. Didn't and, and, matter and it at didn't, didn't, all. Right, and that did not translate. Now, one thing that I noticed out of Marcus Allen is that I saw him display gap integrity as a free safety at times with the way that he was lined up. If they, if this, Here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you and get, what did Shamarco not have? Uh, uh, he, uh, they, they called him a headache when he got into training camp because he asked so many questions. Yes. Um, and. His thing. You got Bradley, the teacher at the teacher in the, of the secondary. He's 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 the secondary coach Tom now. Tom Bradley. Tom Bradley. He's going to be the guy. Maybe he there's is something a there. Too, right. More, and that was his role uh, at Penn State for many many years. And this, this could be 
a nice relationship here for Allen to come in and be. And it's funny they got Edmonds, they got they got they, they got um, um, Davis, and and they got Burnett. Those are three guys that you think are going to be in that mix. But Marcus Allen, I feel like he could be that guy I want in the box because of the way that he hits. In the way that he in the way that he moves. Now, I do think that he's going to be a guy that I don't want lining up against those receiving backs of the Patriots, like James White. No, yeah, uh, I, I think that whenever you get on the field in a mini camp setting, yeah, the first thing that I'm looking for because yeah. none of the stuff that you're talking about is going to come into play. <laughs> no, this is this all weekend. Yeah. Okay, that maybe in Latrobe you start seeing the first. Oh, look who's with the first team. Mm -hmm. Look who takes Vinny's place. Like you're saying when they come off the field on third down or whatever, how are you lining up, how many DBs. But what I'm looking for in minicamp from these guys are intangibles. Mm -hmm. I want to see how they carry themselves. Yep. I want to see how they conduct themselves. How do they interact with their teammates? Are they being respectful? Are they being aloof? Um, no one cares how athletes are with the media. I get that, and I mm -hmm. appreciate that. Yeah. We kind of do, yeah. because that's a, that's a first gauge. Not that we care, care. It's the earliest sign that we get uh, to see the demeanor of this player. Yeah. What's, what's the level of, uh, you know, insight, intellect, accountability? Right. Those things that you're looking for from those guys. When Cam Hayward came in as a first-round pick, mm -hmm. just knocked you dead. Yeah, because he was he's the He's man Cam. Just, I mean, the Cam Hayward, he was... And, and, and yeah. that's all proven to mean something. Mm -hmm. He's the defensive captain for a reason. Yeah, and, and, and a spokesperson. He's not just the on-the-field captain. big, big man in uh, the community man, and everything you want a Pittsburgh Steeler to be. I don't know if you remember the first time that, I, that, that the Steelers lost my, when, I was, when I was going to games this year at the, at the Bears game. You told me, he was like, there's Cam Hayward, go right ahead. And Cam looked like he was going to kill somebody. Didn't matter. And, uh, and so I told you. You mean after the loss? After, yeah, after the loss. I and, told you in the locker room, just go get him. It's yeah. Cam. And so I walked up, and I was like, all right, let's hope he doesn't bite my head off. And so I said, nope. hey, Cam, he was the most professional guy. I was Thoughtful like, and everything. And all that stuff does play into a role. And maybe, maybe we'll see some of that for the first time this weekend. Go rookies.